What's going on guys? No, no, just checking in. And in this video, I want to talk about whether or not people with depression or people who have suffered from depression that included suicidality, uh, whether or not we should be owning guns. And I say we because I think it's important to say right off the bat that this whole video will be coming from the perspective of someone who has suffered from major depressive disorder and, and more specifically as it might pertain to this video who has suffered from suicidal ideations and, and I want to just jump right to the chase when it comes to what suicidal ideations meant for me and how it pertains to this topic. See when I was severely depressed and, and really really unstable and not doing well back in 2011, 2012 and a little bit into 2013 I would go through these stretches sometimes it would last months where uh, I would have severe ideations of dying. I couldn't walk down the road without being like afraid that I might lunge in front of a truck. Uh, every piece of cloth that I looked at I thought might be used as a means to hang myself. I'd look at knives and I'd be honestly afraid I might just grab it and slip my wrist. You know, For anyone that doesn't know depression, this all sounds crazy, um, granted, but for anyone that understands mood disorders, you know how insidious and how just psychotic it can make you. Uh, it's crazy. And so with that in mind, as extreme as it sounds, it's a real thing, and, and obviously a lot of people know that. And I decided that it made sense to never own a gun. I, I was always afraid that if I did, and I was in a desperate moment, what if I went ahead and, and lost my cool? This is coming from someone who's driven to a bridge to jump off. I just didn't make the leap. But it doesn't mean I couldn't, right? At least that's how I look at it. I think we all have ideas about things we would never do, but after you've battled dangerous depression for years, you start to question what you may or may not be capable of. And so guns seemed like something that should never be a part of my life. And it was also kind of easy because I was just never around guns growing up. My grandparents were missionaries. My parents just didn't own guns. And I'm not saying we don't believe in the right to bear arms. I certainly do. I really do. I've just, I've always been a little bit afraid of them. To be perfectly honest, I remember I was on like a rafting trip once and a buddy who had like a 9mm and offered to let me shoot it. And I was like, I'm good. Like I just, the guns kind of scare me. And like I said, it, it was further solidified that I didn't need guns in my life after the depression. Moving on. So, uh, as everybody likely knows, I'd be shocked if you didn't, there's a major tragedy in Orlando and my heart goes out to everyone who was affected. It's horrifying. Uh, it's scary. And it's sad. And I have a lot of friends who are in the community that was specifically affected, and uh, it's heartbreaking. But with that happening, it sort of stirred up, I think for a lot of people, uh, and me included, it, myself included, it has stirred up this conversation as to what we can do as individuals to maybe help prevent things like that happening. And I couldn't help but think um, that if there was a reasonable person in that nightclub in Orlando that was efficient with a weapon. Maybe they could have minimized the casualties or something like that. So I was like, where do I fit in with that? Where does the depressed community fit in with that? Because I'm sitting here thinking about my ability to protect myself and my family should such an act happen around me, a mass shooting from a very deranged and motivated person. Could I protect my family? I'm like, no, I couldn't. I didn't like that. But then there was always that dilemma. You know, I'm someone who suffered suicidal depression. I shouldn't own a gun. I mean, not that I can't see the writing on the wall when my mood starts to turn, but my mood can turn quick. It really can. So I was talking to my wife about this, and, uh, and this is sort of what we came up with. I think that I do want to learn how to use a gun. And I do think it's reasonable and, and useful to know how. I, I, I feel kind of silly being 29 years old. I don't know how to fire a gun other than to pull a trigger. I don't know how to load a magazine. I don't know how to turn the safety off. So, I mean, when the question comes up, like, should I go through this? Should a person who suffered depression go through with this? I think if you can put certain safety parameters in place and execute them, I think I've converted over to thinking yes. I think we need more reasonable people with uh, sound judgment and concealed weapons for situations like the ones that happened in Orlando. The, the other end that always comes to my head is how many senseless accidental killings come based on owning guns. I've heard statistics that the chances of being shot by a gun greatly are increased um, by people that own them. But I digress. We're talking about whether or not someone with depression should or shouldn't. And so here's what I think. And I've psychobabbled, but that's me. That's what I do. 
Um, and here's what I'm going to do. I've decided that I'm going to learn how to use a gun. I'm going to own a gun. My wife is going to own a gun. And I'm going to get my concealed weapons light permit or whatever it is. I don't know if it's a license or a permit, but I want to be able to conceal a weapon. But I don't want to have direct access to my gun in my own home. And that's basically what my logic was. That's what my logic is. And I want to know if you guys line up with that, what you guys think of this. But we've decided that my wife is going to have the only access to the lockbox that will have our weapon or weapons in them. Uh, in a moment of crisis in our home, I can wake her, she can unlock it. And and if we decide that we're going out into the world, into a situation that could seem potentially dangerous or whatever, although it certainly seems random when danger is coming, then we can both conceal. But, uh, but I wouldn't own a gun if I didn't have someone who had ultimate access and ultimate control over the safekeeping of those weapons. That's sort of where my head goes right now. Now, I want to also say that this video is to promote a conversation. It's not to dictate a, a, a locked-in, solid, and you know, sound idea of what should or shouldn't be. I want to learn from you guys. That's my favorite thing about this channel. So I want you guys to tell me what you think. Now, in my head, if I didn't have Jesse, my wife, I don't think I would feel comfortable owning a gun because with mood swings as rapidly as they can come for me uh, with a history of depression, with a very specific knowledge on what it's like to be suicidally depressed, I don't feel it's safe for someone with depression to own a gun and be the sole person responsible for that. I think it's a risk. I know that there are times, there are times when I was severely depressed that had a gun been around, the chances of my suicide would have greatly increased. And it sort of makes me nervous. It sort of makes me nervous, but my wife and I can come to an understanding we already have that I won't have access except for when we're going out into a situation that we both want to conceal and or she can open it if we feel like someone's breaking and entering. So again, I really look forward to hearing what you guys think. I appreciate your time and we'll see you guys in the next video. My name is Noah and remember to stay brave in whatever you face and whatever you're going through, you can get through it one day, one hour, and one minute at a time. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.